Well, hello, my friends. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, and I just came upon this article, Popular Diets That Could Be Bad For You. And because I like to be fair and um, open to other food plans, I thought you might be interested <clears throat> in what this author said. Um, it was updated in April of this year. So, um, anyway, it, it starts off with your friend lost weight on the paleo diet, your mom slimmed down on the military diet, your sister is reaching her weight loss goals with wheat belly, now it's your turn to get trim. Um, should you follow the footsteps of your friends and family? Not necessarily. These popular programs could, be turn, could turn out to be a diet disaster for you. Why some popular diets fail? Just because a weight loss plan is, a, is popular doesn't mean that it will work for every dieter, which is what I like to say a lot here on this channel. Most diets fail eventually. Up to 80% of dieters regain their weight that they lose. Well, that is not encouraging, is it? Many diet, dieters return to their previous eating habits and the pounds come back. In some cases, they put on more than they lost, which has always been my case. Given this fact, it is essential that you choose an eating plan that fits around your personal needs and lifestyle over the long haul. Okay, you need to be realistic about what it is. So, popular diets that may not work. The Wheat Belly Diet. Millions of copies of this book has, have been sold. Dieters swear by the recommendations of Dr. William Davis. He encourages his followers to eliminate wheat in order to improve overall health and slim down. But is it right for you? If your favorite food is bread, then the answer is no. If you love foods that the wheat belly plan eliminates from your diet, you're better off limiting the intake of those foods rather than removing them from your diet altogether. Hmm, that's not me, but you could easily gain weight if you fall off the wagon of another food plan that you're on and it doesn't include bread. So. This is taking into account that maybe it's somebody that just eats too much and isn't allergic with um, the response of craving, the phenomenon of craving and wanting more and the brain lighting up. So just saying. So if I could eat bread in safety, <laughs> yeah, I would. The paleo diet, this diet also called the caveman diet is popular among heavy exercises, especially those who participate in popular CrossFit programs. According to the website, dieters on the paleo diet eat grass-fed meats, certain cuts of fish, fresh produce, eggs, nuts, and seeds. They avoid a wide range of foods, including anything processed, dairy products, cereal grains, potatoes, and salt. While the foods allowed on this diet are decent, healthy foods, some people who are constantly on the go may struggle to maintain this fairly restrictive plan. So, the military diet. Dieters who want to lose fast often go on the military diet. This popular three-day plan um, that has no connection to the military, it says in parentheses, advertises that you can lose 10 pounds in the first week and 30 pounds in a month as long as you follow the program exactly but you'll be eating primarily saltines, tuna, hot dogs, and grapefruit. On your four off days, you need to restrict your intake to 1,200 to 1,500 calories of lean protein, fruits, and veggies. This plan is simply not reasonable for the long term. Yeah, seeing I don't like tuna or hot dogs or saltines, <laughs> I guess it'd be a, a food plan of grapefruit, and we already know that the grapefruit diet doesn't work, right? Okay, next, gluten-free diet. People with gluten sensitivity or celiac disease follow a gluten-free diet for better health. But many others are choosing a gluten-free diet for weight loss, and I actually thought that if I did that, I might lose weight. Didn't happen. Um, can it work for you if you're trying to lose weight? Probably not, especially if you love the many foods that contain gluten. And as I learned from the no pain Excuse me, excuse me, Freddie. No grain, no pain diet is that the gluten from things other than brow, which is um, barley, rice, oats, and wheat. So the 
gluten in other things that um, like rice flour and buckwheat, he said, and a couple of other things will eventually um, build up. And so then you could um, have the same gluten sensitivity to those that are called gluten gluten-free items. So going cold turkey on cereal, bread, bread products, crackers, and other gluten-containing products may, may, may not be realistic for people who have made these foods a regular part of their everyday life. In addition, whole grains like wheat can be an important part of a healthy diet. Of course, many companies are now making gluten-free um, varieties of popular snacks and treats, but many of them were full of sugar, starch, and calories. And JJ Virgin was talking about that today as I walked and listened to her podcast. You know, they have to add a lot of sugar and chemicals to make the food taste good when they take out the fat or, um, you know, other things. And whole grains, there are no essential grains needed for your body. So um, even though some people swear by those things, it could spike your blood sugar. And she is not a believer in the glycemic index, just the blood sugars. So I guess there's a difference there. So, um, so not necessarily a weight loss kind of program, more of a health program if you are gluten sensitive. Juicing smoothies, liquid diets. Uh, eliminating whole food altogether sounds like such a simple idea. Um, which is why juicing smoothies and other liquid meal replacements are appealing to many dieters. But even though these weight loss um, healthy smoothies, um, but even though these weight loss plans are simple, there are significant downsides to juicing and so-called healthy smoothies aren't good for your diet in some situations. If you're a person who really enjoys food, cooking it, tasting it, and eating it, then liquid diets may not be the best solution for you. And one of the things that a lot of the people say, the gurus, is that if you're having all these smoothies and juicing your veggies and your fruits, you could be losing the precious fiber. And the fiber offsets the sugar content in fruits and veggies. And so it's like nature's balance. And so if you're doing juicing or blend, blending drinks in a blender or food processor or, processor or whatever, you're taking away your digestion of the items. So um, that, could, that could mess up things. Plus some smoothies have like five full fruits in them. And that's an awful lot of fruit overload onto your body, especially if you have it in the morning um, when your body might be craving more protein and fats than carbs. Okay. The final one is packaged food diets. Popular programs that offer packaged foods like Jenny Craig and Nutrisystem are popular among pe people who need a convenient eating program. But some of the meals in these programs are high in sodium, no surprise, making them poor choices for dieters with high blood pressure. Portion sizes also tend to be very small. And I'm sure they use tons and tons and tons of chemicals in both of those programs food offerings. If you like to eat a lot of food or if you have special health concerns, you may want to chat with a registered dietitian before investing in one of those plans. So why do these diets work for some people? In some cases, the progr programs align with the dieter's health needs and lifestyle. But in some cases, the plans are just creative ways to restrict calories. Weight loss can only occur if you change your energy balance. For example, a new gluten-free dieter might lose five pounds because she ate less food overall, not necessarily because she ate less gluten. In addition, when someone chooses to go on a diet, the simple act of focusing on their daily food intake often causes them to eat less. And the success of the program therefore has little to do with the specific program and more to do with the choice of making healthy eating a priority. And that's what a lot of people say like if you've been on a standard American diet and eating the huge portions and having many, many snacks all day, every day, and then you go on to a, a carb-restricted or a um, sugar-restricted or a, a food-restricted plan, like, say, Weight Watchers, you know, you've, you're just cleaning up your act. And so with only a certain amount of points each day, you can't be eating the types um, or the full portions of what you might have been having before. And so 
you lose weight just by the very fact that you're having less volume of the no-nos, but you're still having the no-nos, right? Because you can have the no-nos there, and that's the freedom of Weight Watchers that so many people prefer over um, a restricted diet like a gluten-free or a wheat-free or a mm -hmm. um, low-carb, high-fat, or a keto or a paleo, you know, where there's definitely different things that are not allowed. And in Weight Watchers, you can just have um, restricted type of foods. You can have the food you want, but you're having, like, say, a contained package of it instead of having a bag of it, right? And you mark, the, you, you tr definitely track your points. So, those are some diets that are known not to work for everybody. And that's why I just thought I'd bring up a provocative title topic for all of you, because you just never know. You know, and, and for me, if you had told me when I entered Weight Watchers in June 2014 that I would be low-carb, high-fat, keto two and a half years later, I'd say, you're crazy. First of all, what's keto? You know, I didn't even know. I don't know how I fell into it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I read the Wheat Belly Diet, and of course, what they don't say in it is that that's what you're going to end up doing because there's no sugars or grain or wheat at that point. And then the total health is no sugar and no grains totally. So what else is left is um, low carb, high fat, um, small amounts of animal protein. So I didn't know what I didn't know. And this is where I've evolved. And for some of you, you could be doing some of the um, food plants that I just mentioned and have great success with them because your body and your lifestyle has adapted to it, especially if you're cooking for others and it makes it just easier to do something, you know? So, that's it. Just a little potpourri of plans for you to get provoked about. Have a wonderful day. This has been Sarah P. Pearl. Oh, pearls of wisdom and food. Lots of peas there. I'm telling you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye for now.